so I hope you are. <laughs> I hope so too. I just wanted to talk about a card game that is online that I've been interested in. It's a well-known game from the 1920s. So as part of that, I was going to show a little video from the 1960s to show you that this game used to be taught on television. $1,000 for half an hour, and it's big money. Um, nowadays, these professionals make about $100,000 a year for playing this game. Uh, people are putting it online, so it's, you know, it's got a long history, this game, 100 years or more. Most of the people who play it are retired. You need time to play bridge. We'll just have a quick look at the rules. This is the only way I could think to explain it to you. Just have a look at someone play it, or two teams play it. There's a north-south versus an east-west. And now let's see what happens this week. Huh? Bridge teacher Peter Levin Tritt and tournament veteran Harold Lucas challenged the fabulous Shankins. All right, Peter, you and Harold are both old friends of mine and teammates, so don't have to play too well. Well, we wish you good luck too, Howard. <laughs> Thank you. Wish you meant it. Five, he has a hand there. Yes, he has 23 high card points. So to evaluate hands, they give four to an ace, three to a king, uh, two to a queen, one to a jack. Um, then there's other factors that come into play. But so it's, it's a, a mathematical calculation to work out how strong your hand is. And a well-balanced hand. It's a classic two-note triple bid. I don't. Any bid such as two means you've got to add six onto it. So you're going to take eight tricks. Now it's a trick taking game. Everyone puts a card out, the highest card wins. Yes, sir. Any cards you play? All the pack is used, all the pack. Howard Shaken. Howard, winner in his illustrious bridge career about every major bridge title, can daydream about past glories with his hand. Pass. Here's Harold August, his partner is open to no trump. Not much here either. No, he hasn't much, but it seems to me he'd be uh, gratified to find his partner with either four hearts or four spades. Can I just ask, has anyone played 500? All right, so you understand what a trick-taking game is. So bridge is considered to be the premier card game. Uh, it's, it's similar to 500, but because you've got 13 cards each, there's levels of bidding. So you can convey a lot more information by your bidding. So it has the same structure, you have bidding and then you have the play of the cards. Uh, because it's late at night, I'm just not going to go through it all, um, you know, much as I love these old TV shows. I'm just going to show maybe that you, you see people just put out cards, uh, that's still the bidding, comes a bit further. All right, basically you put out a card and the highest card wins. And what will the plan be after this trick, Charlie? Huh? I believe he'll attack the trump suit, Alex. Let's watch. All right, Leventritt gathers in his first trick. And you're right again, Charlie. Leventritt lays down his ace of trumps. Remember now, this is a false paid contract Peter is struggling with. So, you have a trump suit 
and part of the rules are get the children off the street. So you want to play your high trump suit to get rid of the opponent's trumps. A trump is a suit, trump suit is a tr suit that's higher than the other suits. So that was established by the bidding. Um, we'll just watch two tricks, just uh, 30 seconds more and that'll be enough. And every student of the game, I'm sure, is watching us closely. <laughs> Peter continues trumps leading the king. Howard Shaken gives up the nine. Dummy a little one. And B Shaken follows. All but one trump of been drummer. So you count your cards. He plays his six of spades. Howard shows up signaling with the seven of hearts. Dummy plays the high tick. So the basis of the game is to work out what's in your opponent's suits, so that, uh, in sorry, in your opponent's hands, so that you can, you know, play to the optimum level. At back on the bidding, the higher you bid, the more points, more bonus points you get. So uh, I call it the chess of card games. I really think it is. I know when I had sports injuries, I decided I wanted a competitive game, so I I switched to I took up bridge. Where do I come into this? I just wanted to say to you that people have hobbies. I can't believe it when I read it, but I've spent $80,000 on my website. It's just, you know, it's happened over a number of years. Um, it's nowhere near finished. Will it be ever be finished? I'm not quite sure, but it's to teach people the game. Are other people doing this? Yes. Um, Bill Gates has got a website in this. So how do we get, we've got to go in here again, have we? There's a card on the table. So uh, the, the main one, uh, Bill Gates is on the board of that one because both he and Warren Buffett are keep very keen on bridge. Can you see the, oh, the password of the capital G, right? So I hired a number of programmers over the years. The hardest part for me was to find them. Uh, I looked. It is case sensitive, so you will have to enter capital letters. Oh, well, we had that before. The password. Maybe I didn't put two Gs. So now I do have some small JavaScript skills, very small. So I started stuff myself and didn't go very far. Um, I set up some tr uh, stuff to learn the game. And my basic idea was that you would have a question, you would click and the answer would appear. So that was my basic idea that you would try and address the questions, then look and see. Um, so it's just hide and show. That's that's the JavaScript behind this. Where's F12? The other bit is each of the, pa it's all just one file. So I, I did, I don't know whether this is good or not, but you, when you click up the top here, you open up a page. So it all, yeah, that's really well done, Peter. Um, that's just one file. And show and hide is um, showing you the different pages. All right. So that was me. I know practically zero JavaScript. So I have to hire people. And I've hired about six people over the years. And what 
what's the hard bit? It's not always clear to me what's, what is the hard bit about doing programming. So I call it Ace King Queen Bridge. AKQ Bridge. So some learning, some playing, some basic bridge. The next thing is to add a little competition in there. So we're trying to replicate what you saw with the TV show. Now it goes to App Harbor, so it takes a little while to warm up the, the, the server. And you've got all the normal things have to happen in the game. I don't know whether you saw from the TV show, but the game is actually played. This person down the bottom is trying to make the contract and they have a dummy opposite them. So the person opposite puts all their cards on the table. This is quite a unique feature of the game. Uh, so human is south. They play the cards of dummy as well. And east and west are computers. So you're supposed to six, it says four spades, that means 10 tricks with spades as trumps. So as I said, first thing you do is normally is to get the children off the street, get rid of the opponent's low cards. Now, what else have I got to say here? Not an awful lot. Ooh. Hello, did I switch it off? Yes. Hello, thanks. So, not an awful lot. Um, the present programmer, you'll be pleased to hear, is in Eastern Europe, Minsk, Belarus. So you're not pleased to hear that at all. But I've had local programmers. Uh, it's a, a hobby, it's a side project for people so they don't really persist with it. You know, they go on to other work. Uh, so they stick with the game for a while. But they've all contributed, which has been great. Um, I find them on Hacker News. Uh, found them with .NET user groups because on the the server is C sharp and the late, latest programmer. All the programmers want to change stuff. I guess I understand that. You know, you want to go with what you know. So at the moment, as he said, he's got Signal R. He's got a single page application. Uh, it's Knockout, Sammy, Require various technical details that he just uh, provided for me and a Mongo database. So there's a, a lot of work into what's something simple and it's connected to another program for the AI. So that other guy could say tomorrow, oh sorry, you can't have the AI anymore. So the whole thing would just collapse. Um, so, you know, you, you, you've got to be keen about it to put out all that money and know that tomorrow it might just stop. So that, that's a hard bit. So what would we like to do? We'd like to have competitions in there. We'd like to have maybe our own play AI, our artificial intelligence behind it. So this, there's things to be added. Um, do a lot of people play it? No. So about 200 have signed up. On any one day, only, you know, maybe five are playing, that's all. Uh, does it need improving? Yes, because new players say it's too hard, uh, experienced players say it's too easy. So you're trying to develop levels in there which aren't there at the moment. And I just believe there is a market for this sort of thing that you, if you went to see it surprised me when I saw on the board that, that you have a jobs board I didn't know that you had a jobs board I just didn't know that your meetup page is one way I could have tried to find programmers I didn't know about that so I'd imagine if you went to other meetups you'd be surprised people have interests which they're passionate about which they might need some JavaScript coding for it's that strange thing. How do you find people who want your skills? I think the last thing I'd say is I, I want to, the community, the community that plays bridge have got, they've all got gray hair, right? 
So the, the part of it is they always think, how can I pass this game on that's been going for 100 years? How do we keep it going? And I noticed on the latest, latest newsletter, there's about 40 new members at the bridge club. So they've suddenly had to one of the main bridge clubs in town. So they've had a resurgence. So there is a resurgence going on. But I, I think also we've always, people are always looking, if you, you go to those bridge clubs, they're always looking for younger members. And this is part, just partly my, one of my ideas. The hard part of the game is the bidding system. That's the really hard part of the game because there's a plethora of bidding systems. So you have to say, oh, to my money, you present a simple system and you say, we're sticking with this system. And now the, the, the play AI, let's really fool around with this. Have a, a code competition where if you've simplified the variable part of the game, structured it so that it's not changing and then you say okay now the the hard bit which is random numbers guessing what's in other people's hands coding for that coding for how to explore that space as quickly as possible how to use the information from the bidding to tell what's in people's hands how to use the information from the play the cards they've already played to say what's in their hands that then is a challenging interesting problem because that problem just hasn't been solved. You know, this is much harder to program than chess. Much harder than chess. So it's never been solved. So you have to put the boundaries. It's like any problem. We want to solve physics or any scientific problems. You've got to put boundaries on it so that it then can be soluble. Um, so that's that's what I would love to do later on uh, down the track. Um, and with that, I will finish. Thanks for your attention. All right, thanks very much. That's actually a really interesting problem to solve. As you can see, there's a hell of a lot of permutations there, and there's a whole bunch of different approaches. Um, that actually would be something really interesting to try and get a hacking competition onto. So, um, yeah, we should actually try and um, put together something there, get a contest, get some uh, get some people onto that problem. Um, actually, it would be really interesting to also hear about how you found an external AI service that would that would service that, because you were saying it's it's an external service. So we should have a chat about that. That could be a, an interesting follow-up. Cool, all right, everyone. Um, here is the CampJS rundown, <coughs> as presented by Luke, once he gets his computer up. There we go. <laughs> I'll give you this thing. Get to the